<laughs> well, it wasn't really just running, but it was like zigzagging in the hallways also, dodging cats. Um, dodging cats. <laughs> I think it's a cat superpower to just be right underneath the foot, but like not like directly underneath the foot, but just like all like just off a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ankle twisting. <laughs> yeah. So the cat, the cat survives, but the person stepping down on it gets max damage. <laughs> it's a good give and take. Oh, that's right. I have to check audio, audio, audio. Um, my voice check. Oh, hold on. There it is. Okay, uh, even say something. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Good, good, good. And. Boom. I love watching that. <laughs> Yay! We're back after a week of. Uh, I can't even. Not sponsored. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. Hello and welcome to some sort of talk show where we talk a little bit about art and we talk a lot about <clears throat> fantasy, aka nerd shit. Um, last week we took, we went on a bit of a hiatus because every creator needs to eventually even god took a break so <laughs> keep that in mind <laughs> the week before that though we did the higher echelon quote unquote of the demon tier of whatever realm that we're kind of delving into um some of us don't really even exist in the rings proper <laughs> but um today is the day that we finally get to the uh the big bad big bad man well some of them aren't that bad but um some of them aren't mad <laughs> These things, they are true. Um, where is my notification? Come on, give it to me. All right. <clears throat> so, um, for this, uh, how annoyed, how um, easy was it for you? You know what? I think mine I was actually pretty annoyed with, but it was, <clears throat> it was one of those things that it was a the anatomy was just so strange to me and i just jumped into it without doing enough anatomy studies or really working out where everything should be which i think is always a tough part when it comes to making time lapses like i want to show you guys the time lapses of my process and what i'm doing uh, and as such i don't want to like over polish it too much and practice out a whole bunch of things and then just do like the most polished version so this was one of those ones where i took that like that gamble of jumping into it and trying out some things and fixing it while i go and it was not it didn't make me happy <laughs> <laughs> well yours also has a lot of detail that is like potential detail um yeah also before we get any further just to kind of remind people i also forgot that i got rid of those assets but um when we throw up what we did, I'm sure the visuals will come straight back. But let's review who we're kind of, who we've been kind of leaning towards this entire time through the minion, through the higher echelon to now. Um, so you were going with. I decided to choose the uh, play setting of Eberron, and I was going for the Demon Lord of rage and bloodlust uh rack tool cash uh, that even sounds like a war chant <laughs> um, 
Crash. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good one. I like it. <laughs> and I went in slightly the opposite direction. Um, he, he actually established his, his throne through bloodshed and horrible sieging. But um, Grazit, the... Um, I forget... Ah, crap. I forget what what realm he resides over, but it's like uh he's supposed to be of all the of all the demons he's supposed to be kind of the um nicer looking of them even though his mannerisms will betray that visage um i didn't really think that I, at first i didn't think that it was going to be all that interesting because um unlike rockpill cash or um baphomet or Orcus, you know, uh, Grazit is a. I hate saying his name. I hate all. I hate trying to say all Drow-ish names, just because the minute that apostrophe is there, it's just like, all right, whatever. You say it however you want to say it. Um, <laughs> but um, Grazit, in and of himself, is basically just a dark elf. Um, so basic humanoid pointy ears. I mean, that's basically what it is. But if you really want to get further into it, there are, there's like 50% of the art base that gives him sort of that, um, uh, anthropomorphized goat, like hind leg type thing. And then there's Mm -hmm. the other half that just sort of played it in armor. So you can't really tell like what kind of a leg it is. And it just ends up looking like a normal, um, leg, (laughs) I guess. I wanted to say paladin leg, but that's not, that's not, that's not a descriptor. That's a, (laughs) damn, he got them paladin legs. (laughs) (laughs) Lord. (laughs) All right, so uh, let us, <clears throat> uh, sorry, let us kick things off so that we have a little more to talk about. With, uh, I believe you are up first today. Oh, you are Ooh, off. Look screen. at me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what was I? I of like doing rock tool cash. Um, I was, I actually, I drew more inspiration from one of, uh, one of their like lead generals, which is, um, what like a Raka, uh, Raksasha that works for, for them and is known for like, like, laying to waste dragons because uh, back in their like history and stuff there used to be so many more dragons and so i wanted to have this like epic battle of rakhtul kesh versus a dragon and just like stabbing and attacking it and things and so i was like trying out different designs but what's really weird is that it's like rakhtul kesh is kind of built like a centaur or it has like a humanoid top half and then the bottom half is like um quadrupedal um and it's kind of like in between a dragon. So there's like, there's so much going on in this. It frustrates me because one, I don't, I'm not much of a dragon person or a lizard or a like uh, a horse person. Like that's not where my like ability lies in drawing. <laughs> so uh, I I should have done more studies and brought up, had like resources of where those are. But having a fight between more than just a four-limbed creature because we have wings involved. So it's a six-limbed creature versus a eight-limbed creature, like, in the throes of battle was kind of crazy. But yeah, in, like, the drawing of... Battle, like, like, he has this, like, I don't know. They drew it with this, like, sword wand thing. And I kind of liked it as that it has all these flying daggers and things that they manifest around him and i wanted like shooting through the dragon and attacking him but i also wanted him just because his like rage and bloodlust in je- incarnate like getting really close up in there and stabbing with a little wand knife thing so it was it was it was a fun idea and i wish i could go back into this and i, I would love to with like a better understanding of like the whole anatomy and things but it was, it was kind of crazy. 
crazy. And you're going to see here that I get like frustrated at how ridiculously long I made this dragon's neck since like Actual Kesh is also supposed to be huge in his full manifestation as well as like this dragon's supposed to be huge. So I had to like scale them down a little bit. But it was hard because I didn't want the dragon's other limbs getting in the way of like the carnage that, of that Raklokesh is creating. Yeah, it could just easily turn into a um, Transformers fight of just rolling. Yeah, just... Rolling. <laughs> before, before you put a lot of detail into the dragon's eye, it looked like it was just laughing, like Raktokesh was just like tickling him a little bit. It's just... Stop it! <laughs> no, that's your demon lord, lord specialty. <laughs> <laughs> extreme tickle fights the torture making you enjoy what you never wanted to enjoy at least in public <laughs> spell like ability <laughs> torturous tickles <laughs> yeah uh, that's like uh really the inspiration that uh tasha got for her hideous laughter and the boots of dancing and so many things that's that's really where it came from Great party guy, but Starting to like, I don't know, you can kind of see that like it's so crazy and so many things there. And I think I go, I don't know, what was problematic is that I initially started designing the dragon as a red dragon, but then I needed to like have red blood things places. So maybe it should have been like a blue dragon or something else, but I kind of, eh. I'm still disappointed with how long the two was. week. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I, hate I like this like oogie boogie face. Yeah, it's just it's say. enjoying its time. I was about to say I kind of hate the the pumpkin head esque <laughs> like. What was that like? Uh, I kind of forget what the monster looked like, but in the movie Pumpkin Head, like <laughs> kind of what that brings back to me this is gross <laughs> yeah, that, is, that is very demon-esque though to not only strike fear in your enemies with what you have available but just just in the way you look <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it was i don't know it was fun i like i'm always surprised at how like i I'm trying to get better at zooming in so that you all can appreciate the detail that's there uh, of zooming in in the scene and having like bits fall off the sides. But then there you run into the problem like this of like, there's just so much taking up real estate. And maybe if I had used more colors, it could be better or easier, but I don't know. But like, I think the thing that I hate the most right now is I hate the like the dragon's like noodle arm. There's like no <laughs> definition or anatomy there. It's like a noodle arm that comes to three paw like things. And I was like, eh, whatever. Well, like I, I try. I try a little bit to give it <laughs> some more, but it was the compensating shading. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, had, I don't know. I had fun with the idea. And something that I should have done more in or I was thinking about is when I was like reading up on like Fractal Kesh's powers, most of them is that it has this swarm of blades floating about. And they're like just manifested because they do force damage. So they're not real blades or they're just empowered by, by them to do all damage. Hmm. Um, but they just float around and like attack and cut and things. And he has like a few other moves to make or to target characters and make them attack other things. But it was like a, I think that would be kind of interesting retrospectively looking, going back to the other creatures and thinking about how the blades that have been bestowed to them by Ractal Kesh like float around and can cut. <laughs> like when a Gory Scroll like run forward and charges it's not only like it charging but there's just like this like a wave of blades alongside of it that also crash into you yeah that arm never really kind of leaves the noodle state <laughs> yeah i hate it makes me so angry 
Um, I think that your your scenario is a really it it provides a lot of challenge because just in the sense that there's a lot of things to get in the way of the camera and the action, i.e., you've got a European Dragon Wing, which generally, if you unless you want to get real silly with it, jet like and and like anatomically those thing those things have to be huge so that's already mm -hmm. a really big blocker and then um rock tool cash also has wings i thought his i thought his yeah. quote unquote wings were just like his blades flying around but um no. regardless the blades <laughs> are also a, a, a like a huge like if you spent a lot of time in detail to actually like you know detail in each blade like a just thinking about it makes me want to go mentally insane. And B, uh, it's a lot of distract like that provides a lot of distraction because it's like there's a lot of detail that you could put in with what, with what you're doing, you know, in like the wounds that you're putting on the on the on the dragon, the struggle, the physical struggle between the dragon and Rockdale Cash. But then <laughs> if you have all these blades just in in front of the camera, they're just like get out of the way you stupid mosquitoes i want to see the fight <laughs> yeah yeah i think it was funny i was thinking about this that i really like i just trying to figure out the anatomy itself it would have been so much easier in a sense actually sculpting it and like working in uh in a 3d program or something and really having to deal with the physicality of where things are and then you can just move things to wherever the camera is. Theoretically, I mean, it's still very challenging, but it would be like, okay, this arm is in the way. We'll move that. This thing is in the way. But like, since this is a 2D thing, moving anything kind of stretches it in a way that doesn't pay attention to like the like the anatomy of where stuff should actually be. Which I, I this would be kind of fun. In a, like, if I could sculpt, uh, do this three dimensionally, and then do a turnaround where you can like watch it like in uh, spin around and look at the different angles of stuff happening, that'd be fun. And then you get the experience of the chaos. But <laughs> yeah, that's that's like a that's month. A that's like a month or three of work. Like I've seen, I've seen people, I've seen people do like spend a month alone just on or maybe half a month if they're like really good and super like super interested in their in their project but just on the on just a dragon by itself mm -hmm. Rockwell cash is like super detailed i mean, he can be super detailed and then yeah. you got to try to pose them yeah it's, and uh, then add blood and then add floaty swords <laughs> like it was it's a lot but like i needed I think I needed to spend like a day sketching out the physical anatomy <laughs> of these creatures so that I, I had a better understanding of where it would be. But you never know on a, on a project sometimes where your weakness is, or it's hard to know where your weakness is and where your creative like know-how is going to fill in that gap. <laughs> I got to make you put your um your signature at the end of the film just so i know <laughs> when, it, when it's done i'm still like scanning i'm still scanning to see if there's any like smudges of red that are being added or any shading that's being done <laughs> i think it's we could you know what we'll put we'll put that up next time my little indicator for myself is i take off the little color swatches that i keep in the bottom right uh... but yeah it's a <laughs> we well, never was... really talked about it. i was i was I was like, I, I was like doubting myself the like for a couple of minutes there because I could have sworn that for when we were talking about the noodle arm thing, the signature actually did disappear for a while and then it came back and I was like, what? But I was watching the red being um, sort of you know brushed back in there and I was just like, well, it's not done yet, so <laughs> <laughs> right. There's one. I think, like, really, if I ignore a lot of it, though, and the places of negative space that make me very happy, is that there is some good silhouettes. Uh, and, like, silhouetting is a thing 
uh, you want to have in art that if you if you just turned it to black and white if the scene if it makes sense as a black and white silhouette then you've done a good job selling to your audience what's happening but if you like cover up that bottom part and you just get like the wing the back with the various like things sticking out and the two heads like that actually looks pretty good and then like on the other sides the swords flying through looks pretty good but everything that's happening on the inside that was bad <laughs> I would even argue that the arm holding up the dragon's head would have been, as a as a strict silhouette, would have been kind of confusing to me. But mm. then you're not really looking at. I'm, I mean, I'm not really looking at it as like an art piece. I'm looking at it more like a game show where it's like, what what could that be? Is that like a beard or is it like a? <laughs> yeah, that's like if you didn't have any context. But there is like a give and take of between the silhouette and what you're looking at. I, I don't know. There's a part where, like, I hate knowing how to fight uh, in the sense of, like, it gets frustrating. Like, there was one where I had the Ractal Cash, like, in the early stages, like, holding it up in, like, that very Darth Vader, like, I'm choking you. And then it was going to, like, do a stab or had the, the sword back. But it was just like, you know what? That's not the same as really getting in there. And if you got in there to stab, you would really lift it up. You do like I don't know. You and me know this in like uh, like the, the Chinese martial arts, but that's like that's a very traditional like um, uh, forward stance pose. Like you open up your opponent, you attack them in their weak spot. Like so, that worked out so much better instead of like there you have no structural strength between I ha hold you up with one arm and then I also go this way. So that means my shoulders are squared and my force of weight is coming from where i don't know i but. think i think in that in that area i think your your little your little jabby arm i think that's okay because i've i've seen that you know but that's like really close <laughs> and they're kind of getting into like that like kidney liver area you know mm -hmm. but the arm holding up the head is the one that makes it weird because it's like really far <laughs> back kind of like um, I think despite what you said earlier, I think if you actually extended it out and kind of locked it so it's kind of like a keep away, but I'm, I'm getting you down by the shoulder, <laughs> you know, um, I think that might have, for action purposes, might have been a little, but then you're kind of shoving the dragon's head out of fray, maybe? Let me see. Yeah, it would be back to that weird thing of like, its neck would be way too long again. <laughs> yeah. And, like, even if it was pulling up the head out of the way and it was stabbing, like, or, like, getting down there and stabbing, it would be too close in the arm things, the arm area of the dragon. Because usually you're not, like, pushing someone's head up to strike. You're, like, pushing up their arms so you can get at their rib cage and stuff and their kidneys. But I don't know. <laughs> the other thing Fantasy that I bring weirds. Up, the other thing that I bring up on occasion when we talk about things like the Maroliths and centaurs and stuff is um you know especially when you're doing action stuff like you can kind of imagine what a what a dwarf or an elf would do because they have the same sort of anatomical structure as you know we currently hold but um when you're talking about a thing that has like two or four extra limbs to kind of deal with it's kind of it's kind of an interesting sort of like sit down and be like how <laughs> just like what what do i do with those extra kind of things you know um so it's interesting what you chose to go with here because like you know there's two there's there's in my in my experience there's two different routes you can go with you can either do very simple things like early mortal combat with like you know with uh goro you know just like simple things like hold here and then do very you know very standard human things with the other two things um mm -hmm. or you can do really oh god i can't remember what the other reference was going to be but you know or you could do really complex things where each limb is kind of doing something extremely different and somehow not tangling like that's the that's the thing that's the most complicated to conceive of is how do they not get tangled in themselves <laughs> yeah because even in martial arts you tend not to do stuff with your hands and your feet at the exact same time like there's a little bit of crossover but usually like hand will do something very simple while a leg does something or a leg will do something simple while a hand does something like 
it's really you just it's hard to transfer power properly with everything at the same time but i don't know this is fantasy it's got eight limbs like and an extra one if you want to count tails in some weird fashion <laughs> and since it's, it's a demon thing and it has like spikes coming out of its eyes hell maybe it could face headbutt weird it's disgusting the other the other the other kind of fun aspect about your um your demon is uh the floating blades so i've always fallen in love with the just the aesthetic of having you know um a wizard or something with all these like animated like stuff around him and it, but it falls into the same kind of category as the multi-limbed um let's call it a sword like a sword blade dancer or something you know where it's like Sure, mm -hmm. they can do all these movements, but how do they not cut themselves, or how do they not? So in the same venue, how do all these objects come in to kind of, you know, swarm around this thing without smashing into each other, or just not, you know, or doing the old um, kung fu movie trope where they're not really doing anything until the one that's actually doing stuff is, like, knocked out of the way and then another one can take its place? Mm-hmm. Because, um, like, I think... Um, Avatar, the, not the last airbender, but, um, the Korra era, they came okay. pretty close, they came pretty close, um, but then a lot of the metal bending kind of just slid back into, like, I'm gonna shoot one plate at you at a time, and then that's what that's gonna be, instead of trying to do, like, here's three different plates that are kind of doing a different thing at you. Mm hmm but yeah so yeah. many crazy weird. Things. There's, yeah there's a lot of different things and i think you did the sane thing <laughs> you 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 took the most sane route with this instead of trying to be like line nope <laughs> line <laughs> nope <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I don't, know. I don't know i think it and i've said this before this is a good sketch. Like, like it needs needs a lot of refining before it fully makes sense, but it gets the idea across. And it would be a good start. And with that, we go over to things a little more calm. So there's a bit of a story with mine. Um, <clears throat> and we'll start... Let me see. Nope, I don't think there was any other preface. Shpoom! <laughs> It began with this. So a couple weeks ago, um, finally got a, a notification in VR chat that I can finally like upload, because I don't spend like an excessive amount of time in that game, but um, they do have like this trust system where you kind of have to you know you have to spend a certain amount of time and you know just be on there and make some friends and stuff before they let you upload your own like custom made stuff just so that it's like you know just okay yeah so i immediately went into just i spent like a couple days in a week trying to make <laughs> my my first custom avatar which is going to be a trash bot um and so I just kind of wanted to showcase that here. It's a little off topic, but I thought it was funny enough to try to include. I thought this was going to be faster. It was faster in Sony Vegas. I apologize immediately. Um, <laughs> but the idea is you take a trash can as like the body and the sort of like mouth lid part. And then the sandwich box in the upper corner over there was going to be its eyeballs. So it has little like eyelids. And I was probably going to put some duct tape, <laughs> some duct tape down and then put it on some tank tire treads um, so that it had some faculty of movement. And yeah, then that's, but then um, there came a point in time where I was starting to do research on the tank treads and then I looked at the calendar and I was like, oh f crap, I still have to make demon stuff <laughs> like this is like wednesday um okay. there was also some uh you know some medication stuff that it's not all that important but um 
<laughs> yeah. That sounds just... so ominous to say it that way. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it, eh, whatever. I don't care. Um, yeah, I just, I just also wanted to point out that there's, you would imagine that doing the the lid of a trash can is like super simple, but if you really want to get the detail in there, it's like actually kind of tediously difficult, <laughs> just to, because <laughs> like it's either it's either gonna be doming too high or it's not gonna be doming enough. I had a similar problem this week. Um, I was building kind of like a D and D minis uh, thing, uh, and I don't I don't do a whole lot of that. But I was making a uh, like chairs to go in like the house, and it was weird looking at like um, chairs and really trying to look at like okay, okay, chairs like in a very simple sense, you could just do a flat back, a flat base, and then force like four legs but that's really not how most chairs are made especially once you try to get into like fancy chairs and so it was we it's kind of it is kind of weird when you start looking at the small details and the little uh, variations that happen of like getting it just right so it looks how you want it to look but not super simplified because then you don't really have you don't have anything at all if it's simplified or you don't have very much yeah, I mean, that's kind of similar to what's happening right now in the sense that I had this tear, this upside down teardrop sort of thing for the handle. And then I'm really glad that I had that reference just off to the side because then, because um, when I looked at it, I was like, I mean, sure, I've seen that handle before, but I, as I've been corrected, not on a trash can. So I had to flip it around and widen it out and just be like, oh, God, how do you handle? Um, <laughs> but you yeah, handle? you're your story always will, will always dredge up the one like artist existential crisis that I had, which was when I was animating this little cartoon short, um, mm. back when flash was a thing, uh, just sitting there, putting my hand, my hand, my head in my hands and just being like, Oh my God, how does wood break? <laughs> yeah. How does yeah, one, the world is beautiful and interesting and like really i've had that i don't know i had a, a good moment like that of like what what is really happening on a cold day when you can see your breath like i like thinking to myself like i really don't know enough about all of science to be able to explain what we're looking at why we can't see it after a certain amount of time like what is what is rising versus what should be falling like i don't i don't know i don't know so wait explain to me again what is this what is the trash can bot it's something that somebody can wear and walk around as a trash can yes um yeah. so eventually yeah so um once you put it so it's just the the basis the base creation happens in blender and then i export that into um unity the game engine that uh, vr chat works off of and then um that's where all of the little more annoying bits get added in of where like where your eyes are set um what governs you going forward uh, do you want to add in anything silly? Like if you press in this combination of buttons, you spit out, <laughs> you vomit up a bunch of garbage or something like that. Um, mm. It's, yeah, it's just, this is just me kind of going into, it's like, it's like the, the candy store is open, but I don't have enough money to really buy any of the candy in there is just like I'm just running around just be like oh my god look at all look at all the candy that I can do but I can't take any of it out yet because I don't have those skills yet um oh that's right because <laughs> a lot of a lot of the time that was spent so I, this is like the first day like after I got that notification I went to bed and slept on it and then I woke up the next day trash can um and then I took a break from researching tire treads to kind of figure out how to do those little nuances in Unity and found out that there's a, I may or may not run into a certain circumstances where I would need to do some coding. I hate, I, I, I did some websites back in the day and I hate just, I hate computer language in general, just 
like a there's a lot of them and b um some of them are stupid <laughs> and uh vr chat tends to or unity in general wants to use some of the stupid ones <laughs> so i'm not gonna be I'm not that excited for that so now we get into some relevant shit um <laughs> this is about this is after I kind of went a little insane with um I believe it was C++, but that's the the whatever coding language that Unity likes to use. Um and I looked at the calendar and I was like, "Oh my god, I still have to do some kind of a demon thing." So, I thought that I could be kind of clever and instead of doing the actual demon himself, I could do um Sorry, the um sort of the foyer and the ballroom sort of area where he will host um, the grand parties and host all of the guests from the outer realms and such. Uh, mm -hmm. Whether or not you leave uh, is totally dependent on how shit-faced you get, because <laughs> you may end up just dying. <laughs> Which I've always kind of wanted to write that as a, both as just like a store as a short story, but also as a kind of one off adventure where you have like four to five players or something at the, at the thing. They're all forced to wear some kind of a mask or something and just be in this, they have to exist at this, um, demon Lords, like ballroom, like gala or something. And mm -hmm. the whole, the whole, and it has to be a, it has to kind of be a group of role players. Like they can't be super battle oriented because otherwise it'll be really boring. But the whole concept is that you can't be found out as being human. You can't, you can't belay any information that you were not from this realm. You know, you have to try to fake certain things. You have to try to um, dig up information. And there could be other sort of instances where it's like you could, um, instead of trying to uh, constantly trying to avoid being demasked, you can try to demask someone else and either eject them from the party or, you know, so and so. But if you as a human get demasked, then the entire party will descend upon you as the meal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> eject. <laughs> like, I love how you changed it from like, yeah, ejected from the party when it's somebody else. So it's not like I did something terrible. But then like when it happens to you, like you get eaten. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean, you know, with demons, you kind of you're always kind of in line to do business. But if it's a human, then it's like, oh, so food. <laughs> um, that brings I guess... up an interesting I always wonder about of just like in other planar things i would love to which i'm not much of like a foodie or like um <clears throat> in that science zone but like i would love like i always think it's interesting of like what do they eat there what is what is standard <laughs> hellscape food like or do we just assume that they're all immortal but then like if they just like to eat mortals for the fun of it they got to eat other stuff for the fun of it Maybe. I don't know. <clears throat> the answer is kind of ambiguously floating around in various like sentences in the in the books and mm -hmm. such, in the sense that um for like Orcus doesn't need to subsist off of anything. <laughs> uh he is he is death incarnate. But um there's other you know, there's other um levels of the abyss where they feed off they there it's uh, can't words um it's written that the man the the mains the manes are used as food if they don't stay out of the way <laughs> if they're not smart enough then they are food mm -hmm. but what do the manes eat uh, they don't exist long enough. <laughs> they they don't exist long enough to need sustenance. So I wanted to do a I wanted to do like a great like entrance like a like a door. Um, I all I I recently watched because I did I never got the notification that it was up, but um, Castlevania season three. And. Um, 
Dracula's mm. castle has a wonderfully beautiful door <laughs> at the at the very front of it. Yeah. And I kind of wanted to do the same thing. And that's kind of I just watched that and so that's kind of the reason why I was like, you know, instead of doing the the demon lord himself, I can do his pal or like a portion of his palace. Um mm -hmm. cuz they spend a lot of time in Dracula's foyer person. But then I just kind of jump over to um the demon himself. So I went with the assets that I had laying around, which was a werewolf bottom and Link from Breath of the Wild, and I just got rid of Link's legs and fused him, or am attempting at this point to fuse him to the werewolf. Um, and then I just have to make him more of a dark elf. So, I, w I originally wanted to stay away from this, but um, I, I, just, I just don't have... It's like listening to a chemistry lecture and not actually doing the chemistry of, like, you know, trying to sculpt a table. You know, it's like the, the longer I try, the more tired and, like, disinterested I get. <laughs> so, I just jumped over to um, my rendition of Grazit himself. Um biggest challenges that I saw here were trying to fuse a more human torso to a non-human legging and then trying to add a sixth finger. <laughs> um, all those things are s super weird for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then just making armor <laughs> which my armor is super basic i don't know what um exercises i could do to try to like make my armor more elaborate but <laughs> uh, i do try to change it up every once in a while because i've done the i've done the shoulder pauldron on the on his left shoulder so I tried to do something different for his right shoulder, and I don't know, I thought it worked out okay. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, I like, I don't know, aesthetically, it's very popular to do, like, the asymmetric, like, shoulder kind of design. But, like, but I think it's 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 interesting that, like, it, it there is some strategic value to having different kind of shoulder poltrons. Like, uh... Like, in one sense, there is that, like, sometimes if you do use a shield, having a pauldron that's also, that works with the shield and provides, like, def defense in that whole side of your body uh, without getting in the way of the shield is a good idea, uh, while allowing yourself more mobility on your right hand. But there's also, like, some precedence of, like, really big right hand ones, because that's the thing that you're swinging out and you don't have a shield blocking, or, like, if you're... Uh, a lancer and really your job is just to like lean forward into something like or lean back uh, into it and have the other shoulder more there to absorb shock i think is very i think it's interesting armor is so s strange and amusing to me <clears throat> one of right. the one of the other sort of defining features of grazit is that um some tales depict him as having six horns that are quote unquote barely visible underneath his jet black hair. So I was like, you know, I mean, it could just be like rumor from past, or, like from travelers that like went through his realm and stuff. But I'm gonna <laughs> stick like, with Oh man, there. you're so cute! And like touched his head. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of, I kind of like the idea that he does have, he does have like a crown, like a crown of, you know. Of himself, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I guess it's the whole hidden thorn but beneath beauty kind of bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing that I didn't really want to mess with too much was the fact that um, in a lot of depictions of Grazit, he has short, like jet black hair. Uh, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Uh, just because it's 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 a pain to a try to go and try to find another he like set of like pre made hair that will fit. Otherwise, I would have to like rescale and do all this other stuff. And I'm already kind of pushing to three o'clock at this point. Um, 
and then what was the other thing that just popped up? Um, oh right, the eye. That's that's the other thing that I want to do. So he's also depicted as having um, um, luminous green eyes. Um, Link has blue eyes, but I was just like, you know what? Where the camera's gonna be, it's also gonna be dark, and you're not really gonna see the color of it. Um, I was actually really impressed with how natural, like not it, like it doesn't stick out too much. Adding that sixth finger, like it looks like a normal hand if you're not looking carefully enough. You know, like it doesn't look mm -hmm. like it. It's not too wide, even though I did stretch it out a little bit. Um, like look at that. That looks like a that looks like a standard hand, and if you weren't paying attention. Um, that's a, you know, it's a friggin' that's a, that's a friggin' hand right there. So that's my that's my attempt at Grazit, even though it's a it's a mash together of um, a link. A link. <laughs> that's funny. Wolf. For a long time, it definitely reminded me of like bees with the whole black and gold. But mm -hmm. I like it. I think it looks good at, at like its end product, and definitely. I don't know, a uh, hedonistic uh, character uh, would probably go for gold every once in a while. The image on the, my, my reference was um, in the forgotten realms .com. Um They have a pretty standard image that I've seen mm. pop up a lot where he's kind of escorted by this Merolith and um, in that image, um, everything except his chest plate is like silver and gold, but his chest plate was um, like obsidian and gold. So I just, mm. I I kind of like the obsidian and gold combination a lot better than I like the silver and gold combo. So I just kind of stuck with that through the entire. And then I wanted to give him yeah. more regality by adding the like crimson cape and loincloth looking thing i don't know i i was super impressed with that i mean even though two of those <laughs> two of those assets weren't really mine i tried to do as much as i could to try to move away from what the original asset was like um if it wasn't so late and i was out of my mind like I, and i had to render the video in order to like present it here um, I would have taken Link's chin and stretched it out a little more to give him more of like a Kirk Douglas or something. And then like, um, if I if I really had enough time, I would probably try to like make the hair shorter and just not have so so much of a long hair. But the fact that the Link shape exists makes elf characters like so wonderful to try to like <laughs> create. <laughs> Yeah. And you know what? I I think there is like a a bit of an illusion of like how much work people do. Um like it looks like you're it looks more like you're stealing from other people's designs when you're like taking the full things and then stitching them and doing things. But really, I didn't invent the design of Raktalkesh or uh or the red dragon that I drew. Like I just looked at the references that exist. Like it already decided that it had this many limbs, and that these are the uh, that's the shape that uh, are those spine um, dagger things going through its back. Like takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. So yeah. I would say that's roughly roughly the same thing. I mean, that was that was my main goal. Was like I knew going in there that I was using these things, but I wanted to try to do as much work to get away, you know, to just use it as a base and then work, you know, off of that. But, mm -hmm. you know, if I get in trouble, I guess, you know, two and a half hours of of work is not enough to try to get it away from it. Um, I obviously could have done more, but yeah, so that is um, my attempt at a Grazit uh, and earlier my attempt at Grazit's front half of Palace. <laughs> um <laughs> It went by really quickly, but uh, the one thing that I kind of wished was more 
in there was I actually had um, I found a Balor, and I stu- and I put so I put the I put the um, the Manes that I did in the first video, and I stood him next to the Glabrezu that I did in the second video, and then I found a Balor just so I could have a huge creature in there, and I stuck them all at the base of that grand of the grand staircase placeholder just so you could see the scale of like what that palace foyer looks like but it went by really quick um it's so funny because and i so i stuck link in there also just as a like a human placeholder and it's really <clears> funny <throat> seeing the man has only come up to like just shy of his sh- of his knee <laughs> of his kneecap it was just like oh that's i've never seen it i've never seen that demon sized up like that before but now that he's next to like a human like he's next to a human character and then that human character is next to this like larger glabrazo and the glabrazo is being dwarfed by this by this balar that is so funny (laughs) (laughs) and i think i don't know i think it'd be that's a thing that gets lost oftentimes even when you play video games is like the size differences of stuff like i don't know it's it's so amusing. It's sometimes like I think the thing that like uh, surprises me is thinking about how ferocious, kind of at low levels, like goblins and like kobolds are, kind of or they're not. I don't know. It depends on how you look at them. Um, but like when you think about like a dog barking at you, like if a dog got really mad and was going after you, like a dog is most dogs. Like besides like you know your like uh, great Danes and like uh, large dogs like that. Uh, they're mostly, they're small creatures. So it is like a, oh, that's ferocious. Oh, wait, you're you're small? I don't know. Would I be this scared if I had a sword in my hand? Would I be this scared <laughs> if you had a sword in your hand? Like, I don't know. It is kind of a, a neat sort of thing, actually getting to see them all together. Because as, I don't know, even with all the chaos that's happening between the dragon and um, Ractal Kesh, they're huge things. They should be I mean, they're that's the size of the Goristro or the um, the Balor. I think maybe a Balor is a little bit smaller. Right? That would be ridiculous. Like the flying swords are probably the size of like uh, of your like uh, Grazit character. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of amazing thinking of of Grazit. You I don't mentioned... know, claiming power and being like a force to be reckoned with against such large things. But so are hero characters. Yeah, well, but hero characters generally need help. <laughs> uh, very few hero characters have ever been hero by themselves. It's uh, true. But I'm sure Grazit doesn't just roll alone. No. Actually, that brings into the fact that um, when you said, when you mentioned the Goristro also, that was actually kind of the reason why I stopped doing the palace was because the minute that I started populating it with the size references of the the Manes, the human, the Glebrezu, and the Balor, um, I was like, you know, if I put a lot of detail into this, I could just populate this thing the way that I said I would, or I was, I might do like earlier, where I'd have a you know Manes carrying a little um, little tray of hors d'oeuvres and stuff. Uh, but then I went to the fandom.com thing to kind of just read up on what other people did for Grazit and stuff and he is mm. he has an entourage like if he goes anywhere he's taken the entire palace with him he has like uh how many was it i'm gonna say four he has like four Meroliths that like just follow him around he has a garistro um personal quote unquote personal border control uh he has a cambion who's basically like his little spy diplomat (laughs) you know so he's he's got a bunch of different things that just kind of like follow him if not right next to him they're like you know they're like off in the in the shadows somewhere uh so i was just like oh my god that's that's a lot of detail that i don't want to do and it kind of put me off the idea of wanting to do the um the palace i was like you know what even though i was avoiding it it's probably just a lot simpler to just try to do grazit himself (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> but you try to find a lot of different things, and <laughs> I like it. I like the idea. I think it would be. I don't know. That'd be crazy, crazy. Um, but like crazy to think like at a later time doing a design where where each uh, each week we are building another asset for this like overall like scene, which is gonna very quickly become like uh, you're gonna start like out. I don't know, outskilling the other things <laughs> as you go on. Uh, but it'd be kind of neat to see it like evolve like that. There was like a couple people that I followed on like on various things like Inktober or Mermaid or whatever you have, it's like 30 day challenges where they did just that, where they set up one whole scene and each day they just added a new thing to it. And it was kind of fun to watch that evolve. And that would be kind of cool seeing like the whole court of Grazit come together. Or for our purposes, which I don't want to do, but it'd be interesting to like put together a whole like menagerie or um, like natural history museum of like or unnatural history museum of like monsters and creatures. The unnatural history museum. I love that. I want that to be a thing immediately. <laughs> right? um, like I don't know if you played. Um, what was it? Maybe it might have even been an expansion on it, but like um, uh, Bioshock, but they had like a an extras like thing that you could walk around, and it was just a museum that if you got like you got to look at like the uh, like the the concept art, and it was put up, and like they had bodies of like the original like sculpts and designs that they did of the like different things that they're like, ah, eh, we didn't end up using this, but this is what it <laughs> could have looked like, and here's an idea that we liked, but then we scrapped entirely because we took this other direction. Like, that would be kind of a funny thing of, like, all of our creatures and stuff being put into this unnatural, unnatural history museum. Yeah, that's what I kind Maybe that'll of be tried a, to do. Yeah, that you can take all of our stuff and then put it together as, like, a museum people can go through in the VR chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh... I, for space reasons, I had to delete a lot of the old, like the older, the, the earlier um, sculpts, but the video still exists. So, I mean, you know, gallery. <laughs> um, that, yeah, but <laughs> yeah. trying to add little pieces to a larger set was what I tried. I saw the opportunity and I tried to do it with um, these three assets. Minus Graz, mm -hmm. and I wasn't expecting to do him. I was expecting to do the palace, but... Um, which, you know, because I was kind of excited. That I was like, oh, cool. So, you know, we're, we're basing these first two things off of this one larger thing. So in that sense, I can start with the mana, you know, the, the stupid little guy, dress him up really fancy so that I can make multiple assets of him and then just kind of place him around the palace, you know, doing different things like holding up a table or delivering hors d'oeuvres to something that's probably just going to eat the manas and the hors d'oeuvres at the same time. Um, yeah. And then just have like the Gleb Rezu in like a tuxedo that doesn't really fit very well, but he's trying. <laughs> he's trying his best. Um, just like standing next to a pillar, just be like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, <laughs> and just have a whole party. But uh, that was that was really ambitious <laughs> of me to try yeah. to do in yeah. just a week. <clears throat> yep. It's sad. I keep saying this because, but I don't. I don't ever do it. Like, um, I wonder if it would have been challenging to find an already pre-made ballroom or something entrance, and then you could spend your time on other things. But who knows? It's, it's always so much, and like, I'm sure it's out there if you want to pay money. But we're just kind of having fun and goofing around. Yeah, I don't know if it was in there, but. Um... Before I went to actually look at the notifications, I was doing some research to see what in VR chat um, exists as far as like palace sort of looking things or even a ballroom. So um, I was in um, Beauty and the Beast's ballroom for a little while, just trying to be like, what did they do here? What sort of things can I kind of take away from that? And um i asked my dad actually like what are the like main sort of features of a ballroom and he was like well uh that chandelier is kind of a really big deal <laughs> so i was like oh 
oh my god, you're right. The chandelier is going to be a nightmare. <laughs> hmm. Well, and it's a shame because we're probably not going to make it. And I could think of a couple ways that we can, which wouldn't be overly challenging, but time consuming. But like in these um, like minis set that we've been like uh, me and my girlfriend have been putting together there's several rooms that do have chandeliers in them and it's like oh that's cool except as when we start playing in this we're going to take off the roof so we can look down and put our minis in there so you're never going to see that chandelier unless we want to make some sort of reverse hanging system so it's actually just standing up on some invisible ish thing but then what's what's the point you never know there might be a rogue that wants to swing from it <laughs> Right, and I think that'd be the cool thing of having chandeliers in there. So there's the crazy part of me that says, do it. But there's also the practical <laughs> side of me that says, like, you know, you, you have to also, like, write the rest of the D&D &D story that's happening. Only 15% of the time. It's used every time. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so with that, that wraps up Demons. Um, it was a fun ride and one that will propel us into the many rings of the devils. Mm -hmm. um, this one's a little less, like, theme-y. <laughs> like, you can theme it around the... We, we could probably theme it around the ring itself, but it's not like there's, like, the... This is the main dude. There are, there are, mm. there are none like him. Um... And he has all these followers. But yeah, so uh, in the next installment episode, uh, Devils. <laughs> um, so thank you for tuning in. And if you're watching this on... Uh, YouTube. Uh, be sure to catch us live Sundays at 2 p.m. at twitch.tv slash foxstar. That's F-O-X-S-T-A-R-R. If you want to see more from Evenstar, you can check him out on Instagram at Evenstarlong. And we hope to see you next week or next Monday if you're on YouTube. So, thank you and goodbye! Bye, Internet!